Hi, everyone. Um, thanks for joining. Uh, we're just two minutes away from getting started, uh, but we'll probably just wait one minute as well, see anyone else joins in. Um, just out of curiosity, like, um, can you guys hear me all right? Can you see my screen? Uh, if you could, you know, it'd be great if you could just put in a chat so that I know that now I'm all set up. Hey, thanks. Uh, yeah, sorry, I pronounced your name wrongly. Uh, thanks, Sudeshna, and thanks, Ben. Right, so you know, typical of <laughs> typical of the you know virtual sessions, it's just really hard to get that interaction kind of going. And I guess depending on the number of people that join, you know, please just feel free to drop questions or comments down in the chat and I'll just kind of occasionally kind of pop over just to make sure that if there are any questions I get it answered. If I don't, you know, then maybe towards the end of the session or else after the session um, at the Office of booth, yep, we can handle that as those as well. Right. Wait, it's 1.30, so probably just give one more minute and see anyone else joins in, um, and then I'll get started. All right, it's one minute. Uh, got, I guess we've got eight eight people in the room, probably including myself and Ben as well. So you know, it's sort of a small session today. So you know, let, let's just try and make it interactive. If if you guys like, um, just feel free to drop any questions, like I said, in the chat, and I'll try and address them as we move forward. Um, if that makes sense. All right. So let me just put this one. All right. So. Today, we have a typical scenario here where we have a single page application that needs to communicate with the uh, its backend uh, through a protected API, right, to retrieve some information. And within this simple page application, there are users that have different roles, for example, an admin and a user. And depending on their roles, we'll have you know, access to different sets of data uh, behind this uh, protected resource here. So how can we actually implement access control so that only authorized users can have access um, to this data, um, the API. Or in other words, kind of phrase it uh, more correctly, how can we implement authorization for our application so that only authorized users can assess the protected resource? So my name is John. Um, I'm a solutions engineer at of Zero, And today, we'll take a look at how we can implement access control for our application so that we can access our API endpoints. Um, and just in case, you know, if you need to reach out to me, if you have any questions, um, I do have my contact details here, uh, my Twitter handle, my LinkedIn, as well as email. So please feel free uh, to reach out if you have any questions. All right. So from an agenda point of view, um, we'll, be, <clears throat> we'll be covering uh, very quickly, you know, just so that everyone it's on the same page here. Uh, what is off zero? What do we do? What problems kind of problems we solve? And then we jump in into the live coding session here where we'll be implementing authorization controls. And then at the end, you know, a quick QA session there as well. Let's open 
from the chat. Any questions? Yeah. All good. And I guess just for uh, in in actually in this demonstration, what I'm going to do is I I will be there's some you know live coding, and I do have a repository that have these set of code. So I'm going to actually just paste it in the chat in case uh, you guys wanted to um, kind of follow along as well. It might be easier. Uh, so you know, kind of based on feedback from one of my previous sessions that something like this would help the the uh, audience to actually follow on. All right. So coming back, so let's talk you know, very quickly. Let me give you a two-minute overview uh, of, of a developer's take of what Off0 is. So Off0 is a service for application builders to authenticate and authorize users into their applications. Right? We know authentication and authorization has been around for a very long time, but it is, however, an ever-changing and evolving landscape. New security threats surface up, new best practices and standards evolve over time, and new ways to you know, authenticate users are constantly being developed. Uh, take, for example, sign in with Apple ID and the really up and coming web of N. So when I speak to developers that have to build or maintain either an in-house or a legacy system, they often tell me that they you know, face a lot of pain and frustrations, right? Because not only is there a steep learning curve uh, you know, on all these various identity protocols, there is always this myriad of features or things that you don't know, you don't know, right? Things that you need that you don't know beforehand and catering and future-proofing it is really difficult, right? Um, and so uh, what, and it kind of like what worries them most uh, in the end as well is that they aren't security experts. So what Observer has done is, you know, we've taken all the years of experience, know-how, and security expertise, package it into a service so that application builders like yourselves can uh, simply pick it up, use it, and not have to worry about identity. Uh, instead, kind of use all that time, energy, resource to focus on solving your key business problems instead. Right. So, kind of see over here in this slide here, you know, Offshore kind of sits right in the middle here, solving your B two C, B two B, B two E use cases. Right. We provide. SDKs and APIs in the cloud-based service connecting, you know, any type of application, or, well, almost any type of applications to any sort of uh, user directory here at the top, and adding all these services on top like user management, security, analytics, integrations, etc. Right. So today, in, in today's session, you know, we're going to look at a really, really very small set of the feature set of the Observe platform. Uh, were there any questions? Um, you know, just again, feel free to put in in the chat. Um, doesn't seem like we have any questions at this point. All right. So then that quickly brings us, you know, jumping into this live coding session. And today in this session, what we will be attempting to do is to first create an Office Road tenant, like set it all up, and then create an application, then configure that application to use Office Road for authentication. We will then modify that application to call an API. And in this case, we have an existing API all set up, right? It's a protected API. And then we will implement role-based access control, we'll implement authorization for our application to access that API. And then, you know, um, see it all in action. Right, so the first thing, you know, uh, and, and kind of walking you through that developer journey, right? So the first thing we really need to do is first pop over to offzero.com right here and just sign up for an Offzero account. Right, and that's as easy as entering your username and password or signing up with one of these social directories here. Right. So once you've created an Off0 uh, account, right, Off0 will actually direct you to, uh, and let me just go here. Yep. So it's probably laggy a little bit. Um, and let me uh, direct you to create an Off0 tenant. Right? I got one here actually, but let's create a new one for today's session. So let's call it API base, for example, uh, workshop and today's date, 2020, uh, 24, uh, 0 to 24, right? And what you see here, um, you know, to create an Office tenant is just to enter that the name and select one of these regions uh, which you support in our public cloud environment, right? So you can have an Office tenant either in Australia, Europe, Japan, or the US region. 
I'm based out in here in Singapore, so Australia is kind of closest to me. I'm just going to click create um, an of zero tenant in Australia. So I'll hit that create button there. It just takes a couple of seconds to kind of load up um, the new tenant. This is usually just takes a bit longer during these um, uh, webinars. Um, for some reason, I guess, just traffic, just a little, a little traffic. But it'll come on eventually. Oh. <laughs> it's 2021? Ah, thanks, thanks a bit. Thanks, man. All right. Okay, the tenants created, right? So that really brings us, um, you know, if I go back to the slides here, um, yeah, we create, just created an off zero. Oops, oops, let me actually just um, stop sharing this. All right, so let me bring that back, back up here. Oh, it's really lagging my computer. Okay, so <clears throat> we said we wanted to create the uh, off zero tenant. Let me just cross that out here. Right, and so we set up an off zero tenant, right? So the next thing we want to do is really to create an, and configure an application to use off, to use off zero for authentication. Um, so if we pack, pop back over to the off zero dashboard here, right, we will go ahead and actually click applications, right? And we would, you know, uh, create an application. Just kind of note that we don't have an existing application here by clicking this create application within the off zero dashboard what we're really doing is just creating a representation of the application that we want to uh, implement or integrate off zero with right so i'm going to click create the application there and let's give it a name right let's call it um for example my website and and yeah, you can see here that Office supports a wide range of application types, right? From your native apps, single page web apps, regular web applications, and machine to machine applications. For today's session, we are going to create a single page application. So I am going to select that and click create. All right, so once we've kind of selected the, you know, the application type of zero is going to ask us a couple of questions right um, and the reason is so that it can just generate for us the appropriate quick starts and SDKs and so of zero supports over 64 um, ready to use quick starts and SDKs that you can simply pick it up uh, drop in your app and you're up and running so we are going to build a single page app and I am going to use just plain vanilla JavaScript so I'm going to select that as my tech stack and then Office gives us a couple of options, right? So I'm just waiting for it to load. Um, right. So in, in most cases, usually, you know, if you have an, you would have an existing application, then Office would actually provide you step-by-step -step instructions on how you can actually integrate that with your application. But for today's demonstration, uh, we don't have an application yet. But Offstroke actually, you know, kind of precedes an, um, an entire sample application that you can actually download and install and use it as a base uh, for you to explore Offstroke's features. So in this case, for this session, I am going to use the sample app. I'm going to hit that download sample button. And it provides us some instructions here, mainly around setting the callback URL the allowed web origins as well as the allowed logout URL, right? Settings that we have to set within the Offstroke tenant. And it also gives me a download button here. So I'm going to hit download to download that sample app. All right, and it's downloading. So while this is being downloaded, uh, let's pop back over to settings to update that those configuration. Right, so 
the instructions were to set the call, allowed callback URL. the allowed logout URL and the allowed web origins, right? So the sample app has been configured to kind of like use these URLs, but kind of just to let you guys be aware, because uh, if we run it off local host, now Office kind of treats local host slightly differently just because it's not a non-verifiable first party. So it's kind of, it would ask for consent and um, certain security measures. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to alias that to um, call it my website, right? So let me bypass those consent. Um, and I'm typing it wrongly. So my website, right? And because we are, you know, kind of uh, the SDKs that we're using, Austro SDKs kind of uses a web crypto API. So we kind of need to run it over a secure context. So we're going to run it and launch our applications over HTTPS there. So I'm going to update that, those URLs. I'm going to copy it and replace it for the logout URLs as well as the allowed web origins, right? And don't forget to hit that um, save changes button there. Right, so we've got that set up. Now let's actually um, unzip our downloaded sample web. So I am just going to move it from my downloads folder uh, so this is going to here over into this directory and let's unzip it. All right, and then just for hygiene purposes, let's remove the downloaded um, zip file. Right, so it extracts everything into a folder called 01-login. Let's enter that. And then really what we need to do here is just npm install and npm start. Right, so while that's kind of um, running, so what we've done here, kind of quick recap, we've signed up for an Offstore account, we've created an Offstore tenant, and essentially now we've used the default sample app that Offstore will create, and within that app, it actually uses Offstore SDK. So kind of we'll see kind of everything in action now, how everything falls into place, how you can do uh, authentication for your application. I'm just kind of wondering as well, like, is it, is it like the, my internet connection or is it my, my, my laptop? But this used to seem to run a lot faster. All right. What I'm going to do is um, I'm just going to probably switch off my video. Uh, just hopefully that speeds things up a little bit. Yeah, and, and this plus live coding then. So, you know, a lot of things can go wrong. Phew. All right, so now it's serving the app uh, over port 3000. Um, and if I actually now, you know, uh, open up kind of on local, right? It's, it's um, open up on local host, right? The, the app is configured to run on local host, right? You can see there's a sample app running, right? And as I try to log in here, right? It's still redirecting to off zero, but there's an error. And that's because I've set it up kind of to run off the alias of my uh, on my local environment, but you know the app is expecting local host three thousand. So let's actually fix that within the application. So I'm going to open the application in my IDE. 
let me just on this separate screen that I have here that's also really slow open up this downloaded app and I'll just share it on the main screen in a little bit so yep 10 API days that's one all right and let me just bring it across the screen here Right, so kind of to set, we need to run it off local host. Um, there is just, okay, so this is a downloaded sample app. There is a folder called bin file here. Right, what I'm gonna do is, yep, just, uh, you know, delete that because really what we're doing, making changes in this server file. I'll open the server.js file here and I'm just gonna copy and paste some boiler plate code that you know enables me to run it off uh, HTTPS. So, I'm going to copy some boilerplate code here, paste that there, and kind of just to show you guys what the changes are, I'm just going to show history here. So essentially, what I'm really doing is just requiring the HTTPS module as well as the files system module, and just reading in some certificates and launching my server over HTTPS, right? So nothing much there. So let's actually uh, head back to the terminal. And let me just stop this app and actually uh, insert the, uh, create the certificates, right? So let me call it that. Right, and so now I have the certificates and to, just to show you that it's uh, I'm still running off local host actually, I'll just really quickly show you my uh, kind of uh, ETC host file there. Right, which shows you that I am actually running off local host um, with my website. Right. So, right. So with that, let's actually start the app one more time. Right. So now if I actually, um, actually got, uh, go to HTTPS, um, my website, as you see, it's running off, um, lo local server, secured server there, and I'm going to click login. Right, and this is the, and you can see now that when the user tries to sign in, you know, the Office of SDK kind of handles it, redirects the user to what we call here, uh, the universal login provided by Office of where a user can enter his credentials. Uh, we don't have an existing user in this newly created tenant, so I am going to sign up. I'm just going to use this existing set of credentials, click continue. And kind of just like that, a new user very easily signs up and logs in into your application. Right, and if we go into this application here and we click the profile, uh, we can see some information returned by of zero. So if I come back into my slides here, uh, really very quickly, we have actually created and configured an application to use of zero for authentication. And it's probably a good time to pause here to kind of like, you know, step back and see what exactly happened under the hood. So Remember, we had the typical scenario where we had a single page application and, you know, needing to communicate with the backend API, right? Uh, what we've introduced here uh, with, with Auth0 is we added something called, you know, called in part of OIDC, the authorization server, right? And so the authorization server, in this case, Auth0, is handling the authentication request. So when a user is trying to log in into the single page application, the user is redirected to Auth0 Auth0 handles that authentication request, validate those credentials, and if valid, will accept will actually log the user in. And it does that by, oops, you know, let me come back there to that slide, by issuing what we call an ID token, right? And so when the user logs in and its credentials are validated, we return the user an ID token, kind of proving who he say he is. And that's kind of how the single page application knows uh, that the user is authenticated successfully, right? And we can actually see what is contained within this access token, uh, sorry, ID token. So if I actually pop back and head over to my um, IDE here, right? We can actually uh, quickly walk through, you know, this sample app and then make a change to see how we can actually take a look at the ID token. So this is the sample app we have downloaded. Uh, kind of just three files we really need to be concerned about. The first is this uh, single page app here. It's just this index HTML file, right? 
contains all the HTML tags, kind of, you know, the UI, so to speak, of our application. And what's, in, what's important to kind of highlight here is that this application is using of SDK, right? In this case, it's using an of um, single page app SDK. And the other two files really is just this UI.js and app.js file, right? So if we kind of quickly walk through these two additional files, which is in the public JS folder, UIJS is simply just can kind of think like, well, we're not using any framework. So it's essentially um, our view controller, right? It, it just, it's a kind of like, depending on the, on the URL path, it'll route you to the appropriate view. And the app.js contains essentially the application logic, right? And for example, it handles login, logout, etc. And it also actually configures the Austral SDK, right? In this case, configure client there. So what we want to do here is just to add in another attribute called uh, cache, cache location, right? Set it to local storage. So that we can you know, kind of see what of zero is returning, um, which is a lot more information in the profile um, that was displayed in the application. So let me actually restart this app. Let me pop back here, pop back into the application, right? And let me just actually log out this user and sign him in again. Um, log out. Oh, did I refresh it? Okay, so login. Right, and if we take a look at the kind of dev console now, take a look at local storage, right? You can see Obstacle returns a lot of information. And one of it is that ID token I mentioned. If we copy that and went over to jot.io, right, and pasted that, we can decode the um, ID token. And you can see here that within the ID token, it provides me certain standard claims um, as part of the OIDC protocol, right? So that kind of hopefully gives you, a, you know, on what happens during this authentication, right? Um, yeah, so which which text was it? Is it the presentation text or oh, I see the IDE? Gotcha. Thanks, Ben. I'll, I'll improve that. So, all right. So we've got uh, essentially now coming back to our agenda in live coding. We now need to actually modify the application to call an API. Right. So if we head back into, sorry, let me let me actually try uh, make this bigger. Can't remember the shortcut for this IDE actually. Um, yep. Let me just quickly figure out if I can actually make this um, bigger. I'll just you know close off this. All right. So maybe that's hopefully that's a little bit better. What we're going to do now is we just want to. Um, Coming back to the application, sorry for, right? Here, we are going to add an additional button right here over the menu item to kind of trigger the, the call to the API. So let's head back over to the HTML. I am just going to copy the logout channel tag there. Oops. And edit another button. Um, I am just going to call to get a secret from the API and just update the font awesome there. User. So the application. And we run that, and hopefully that's correct. Let's see if our button there, our logout is not, um, the text wasn't updated, but that's fine. Let's update that here. 
get a secret, right? So we've modified the HTML. Uh, we need to implement this get secret, which is just calling that API. I am going to pop back to app.js, scroll to the bottom and just add in an additional uh, new function here called get secret. And we're going to make an API call, you know, using request and that's an asynchronous function. So let's just call make this async as well. Right, so let's make a call an API. And so we expect a response. Response, and then we will make a request. We will call a, a URL and we will then pass in certain uh, parameters. So for example, we need to pass in the method, which is a get. Uh, we need to pass in header information. Um, and in this case, we need content type uh, to be application JSON. JSON uh, char set um, ETF. All right. And because this is, again, an asynchronous function, I always forget uh, it. Oh, wait, there. So, and the URL uh, to my API is actually, just going to pull that out here. Um, so URL, oops. All right, so let's actually restart this application again. Of our app, refresh it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to open the console and then see, you know, call that API. Uh, reference error, get secret request is not defined. Um, let's just double check. Just, uh, sorry, it's still not. It's not request. Um, it's fetch, right? Let's, uh, let's fix that. Restart. Refresh this one more time. And we need the dev console here, can take a network tab. So what happens if you call this API? What happens is that it actually returning an unauthorized response. So why is that happening, right? So right now, if you come back to the slides, um, we have created the Auth0 tenant, we can quick summary. We created an application, configured an application to use Auth0 for authentication. We've modified the app to actually call an API. However, now we are experiencing some errors and it's good time to kind of revisit, you know, again, you know, this, this diagram here of the single page app and API. So what happened here is that now a user or the application in this case, on behalf of the user is trying to access some information from the API and the API is actually expecting uh, something we call an access token, right? The access token, you know, which is out of the scope of this discussion for this demonstration contains certain pieces of information which the API needs to validate that the user is authorized to actually access the information. So what we need to do here is actually have the application now make an authorization request to Auth0 and Auth0 will then, you know, if the user is authorized, will return an access token back to the application, right? And the application can use this access token, pass it to the API, thereby allowing the API to know that the user is authorized to access the information. So, okay. Um, command shift plus, okay. So let's actually go back into the application and command shift plus this. Doesn't work. 
<laughs> so guys, uh, maybe what I do here, I go paste the link where you can see the it makes more sense from GitHub here. Um, it kind of just direct you to the portion of code that I am making changes so you can follow. Right, so this is going to app.js. If you scroll down, I'm gonna copy this URL. Right, if you head over there, let me give you a few minutes and head down, right down all the way to the end of the, you can see there's a great secret function here. And essentially, this is kind of what we'll be doing um, code-wise. So I do have, you know, just, con right, I, I will just, you know, copy, I guess, uh, since you have access to the code, I'm just gonna copy this, paste it inside my existing code, right? So I can walk you through. So now what we need to do, we need to get an access token. And what I am doing here really is just using the off zero SDK. Um, oh, maybe, let me, let me switch screens, right? This might be better, um, okay. So what I'm doing here now, we have, the making an API call that is failing. And the reason is because it doesn't have an access token. So what I'm going to do is I add to actually, I am using the off zero SDKs to request an access token from um, off zero, right? And that would give me the access token needed to actually call the API endpoint, right? And so to, to retrieve the access token from off zero, we first need to create a representation of the API in off zero. So I'm gonna head back over to off zero here and click on APIs. Right, so again, we aren't specifically creating an API, rather a representation of it, so that off zero can actually return me an access token for the API. I'm gonna click create API. I'm gonna enter a name, in this case, um, my secret API, it's e -C -R -E. API and it requires an identifier, right? So in other words, when I try to make a call to off zero to get an access token, I need to specify, you know, which API I want. And this is the identifier here that I'm setting. And I'm going to call it my secret, it's e it's e secret um, API, right? And I'm going to click create. Right, and once you create the, the API, Office Zero does provide you with some template code that you can configure, you know, on your API site to actually validate the access tokens. Um, what we're going to do actually is just pop over to permissions here, kind of define what this, what permissions that or scope this API supports. In this case, I'm going to set read secret here, and it's really the ability to read secrets. Okay, I'm going to add that. And it's all set, right? So now if I head back, you know, to our application here, essentially what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna make a call to of zero, right? Get an, and request an access token for my secret API and specifying kind of the permissions or the scope that I need. So I've head back over again here. Um, what I'm gonna do here is I then need to actually pass in the Token, right? And you know, this is probably simpler if I just copy and paste it back. Just then double check, we get an access token, we pass it in, and we should get an access token. Right, so if I actually head back to our sample application here, um, let me just log out one more time. Huh. Something. Let me log in again. Uh, let me just pull out the console. Oh, it's really slow. Hmm. Okay, yep. Okay, let me clear that. So now let's really make an you know, API call again. So what happens is in the network tab, 
we're getting an error again, unauthorized. And the reason is, if you kind of come back here, like I mentioned, when the API is um, receiving this access token, it is expecting kind of some certain information. And in this case, in our specific use case, it's a set of permissions that, you know, either an admin or a user might have, and it's missing those information, which kind of is a good segue here to kind of quickly talk about, you know, what is authorization and access control? So authorization and access control is really the process of defining and limiting which users are allowed access to which resources, right? Kind of simple to understand. And, you know, of zero provides, you know, there are many authorization models out there and of zero provides what we call role-based access control out of the box, which is one of the most commonly used models out there, right? It allows you, it's based on, you know, uh, um, and I got a really good definition here, so I'm just gonna read it out, right? So role-based access control kind of refers to the idea of assigning permissions to users based on their role within an organization, okay? So essentially, provides fine-grained access control, and it is often very simple and manageable approach for access management. So in our case here, we have a group of users with different roles, right? And they need to have different set of permissions. And in this case, we're only going to allow an admin access to, to the secret API here. So let's actually hit, let me just double check. Um, so we have in this case here, okay, we need to implement role-based access control. Yep. So we head back here, all we need to do from this perspective here, we, we've modeled the API, really what's left, turning on role-based access control. So if I pop back into my API, go into settings and click enable RBAC, right? Essentially, this will start implementing the role-based access control policies. I'll click save there. And so now I've got role-based access control, I've got the permissions defined, the next step really is just to assign that role to our users. So popping here, if I go into roles, right, let's actually first create a role, right? So I'm gonna call it this the admin role and really it's the admin can read secrets. Okay, I'm gonna click create. And then I can define, you know, which, what, what set of permissions, um, are grouped under this role. Right, I'm gonna hit click add permissions. And in this case, what we want to do is to add um, the permissions from the My Secret API there. Add read secret, add permissions, and then assign this role to a user. I'll hit add user there. And my name, I'm gonna assign our only user here as the admin role. Right, so now with all that set up, all that we really need to do, right, all the heavy lifting has been done, we just need to log in this user, right, just so that he gets the appropriate roles now. Click login. Uh, okay, hang on. Uh. Sign in, and if I actually just open my console one more time, yep, make the API call, get the secret. Yep, did that did that send true? Uh, no, oh, yeah, it did. Um, right, you can see it returns the this secret from the API, and we can quickly you know jump into the local storage and take a look at this access token that is returned by off zero. Here's an access token. Let me copy that and decode it in jot.io. Right, and you can see within this set of access token that the API endpoint is receiving, there is some standard claims in this case, the audience, uh, which indicates that, you know, this is only for the MySecret API to consume. And you can see that we have the scope 
as well as the permissions of this user are now embedded within this access token. And then the API can validate and allow access to this protected resource. So coming back to this slide, essentially we've implemented role-based access control and we've seen it all in action. And I, how am I doing for time? Well, I've got seven minutes left on the clock. So it's, um, I was afraid I might overrun, but um, so kind of to summarize in this, you know, short demonstration, uh, what we kind of like, uh, I guess, uh, seen was how we can actually use Auth0 to implement authorization for applications so that you can actually uh, have role-based access control. For example, controlling access to your API endpoints. Uh, in this example, you know, kind of really quick summary, we sign up for an Auth0 account we create really, really quickly created an Auth0 tenant, started you know, using the sample app, uh, and within that sample app allowed us to explore Auth0's capabilities really quickly through the use of the SDK that is supported, which just kind of wraps around our APIs. And then we use that for authentic authentication, very quickly model our API endpoints within Auth0, and it turned on our back, it allowed us to have access control. So, um, in this process, hopefully, you, you know, you'll be able to see how simple it was to really configure Auth0 to have auth authentication and authorization. Uh, we, what we didn't really see was, you know, the extensible parts of the platform. I do encourage you kind of to reach out so that we can share more information if you're interested. But um, I kind of wrap down the whole, you know, philosophy of Auth0 here. Hopefully, you seen, can see the developer experience on how we enable or empower developers to really get, get up to, you know, quickly integrating or implementing identity for their applications. So kind of like, you know, we don't want to build a better camera. We want to build better photographers. We want to empower developers to really, you know, be better at what they do. Uh, like in, 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 in Auth Zero's words, you know, we, we want to secure the world's identity so that innovators like yourself can innovate. All right, um, Ben has a question um, and, yeah, and we have reached kind of the Q&A anyway. Um, Got time for a question. In a situation where RBAC defines CRUD permissions on blog posts, for example, how would you model permissions to allow edit any post um, and edit a post I created? Um, so, so is, uh, yeah, so just think pausing there because, you know, like I mentioned, there are many authorization models out there, right? Uh, and so sometimes the, the, the the answer is it depends. Uh, it depends on whether the problem prob problem domain that you're mapping does it you know um, does it is it suitable for role based access control. Uh, in this case, you know, given that it's just editing a post, uh, you know, and you might have a case where admin and users, it does seem reasonable. Um, ideally, it is possible. I think within the APIs here to conf you know the, the one that I've created to set kind of the permissions you want. Right, you can define any type of permissions or scopes. So in this case, it is possible, for example, um, there's the permissions. Yep, it's loading there to define the necessary permissions, right? So you could edit a set of permissions here, post, edit any post, right? It, it, the permissions can be set, uh, doesn't really matter. What matters is then how you would model that within the roles and add, you know, users, super users, et cetera, and who gets these permissions. I'm not sure if kind of that answered the question then, but if, if we find that role-based access control isn't suitable, then we can go, you know, kind of like different ways to do authorization like attribute-based access control, which is also possible within Auth0. Um, and, and thanks for the question, Sudeshna. Um, for applications I'm building, can I use Auth0 the same way you showed us? Yeah, so kind of when I went, created an application, um, first of all, um, yeah, let me just quickly run through this again. Right? When you create a model that represent, uh, or represent, represent that application within Auth0, first of all, you can, you know, represent, you know, we support many application types, right? So in this case, you know, I'm just going back with, let's just, something different, let's say regular web app, you know, I create, create that, we get, uh, you can see all the SDKs that, uh, and quick starts that we support for regular web apps. So for example, if I select Java, what you notice that as part of the, I guess, instructions next, is that it gives us um, kind of two options right, I mentioned. One is a sample app really for a playground or the base of a new app. 
The other one is here um, instructions, what we call live documentation, which guides you step by step how you would integrate an existing application with Auth0. Right? And we call it live documentation because it, we, it contains snippets of code that comes preceded with your tenant settings. And you can simply just copy, kind of copy, paste it in your app, and you're up and running. So the short answer is yes, you can definitely build applications, uh, or rather integrate existing applications with Auth0. And it is, the rest of the steps are exactly the same. So how can we use Auth0 for microservices? So Auth0 at, I guess, at a really high level, you know, we use OpenID Connect under the covers. So for in particular for microservices, we're probably talking to machine to machine type of communications. So we, uh, Auth0 can, as part of OIDC protocol, we support something we call client credential grant, uh, which is for server to server communications. So you can actually use that feature to request for access tokens that you, your servers can use to communicate with one another. Thanks for the very encouraging word, words, uh, Sudesh. Um, uh, it, it, to be honest, this is the most interactive session I've had and I've done these API days workshops like quite a number of times. So thanks uh, everyone. Thanks for making it um, interactive and thanks again for the encouraging words. Right, we are at 2.19 my time, which is one minute, uh, you know, I got one minute left. So I just want to thank everyone again for, for attending. I hope it was useful. If you do want to find out any more information, please feel free to reach out uh, to me or anyone from the Off Zero team. Thanks, Ben, again for, you know, adding the feedback, telling me, um, you know, being there for me. So thanks again. So thanks, guys. You know, have a great day, everyone, and please stay safe.